Hi, YouTube listeners. This is Chris here. Going to work in a little bit more on my Raspberry Pi project here. Just, just a little something to kill time at home and play around with this really cool credit card size computer. It, uh, I went ahead and mounted everything onto a nice board. And um, this is my project that I'm running FFT analysis on uh, t tones, like mostly the the, uh, the audio of a uh, guitar string. But I'm still in the stages of getting the uh, FFT to work properly. So I've got a couple of apps on my phone here that emit frequencies here. So we're going to emit a 500 kilohertz tone. Okay. And so then that input goes into the little microphone up there. Okay. And then the uh, MSP430 is a coprocessor because I can't get sam precise sampling rates on the FF on the uh, I'm sorry on the uh, Raspberry Pi. So you can see the uh, the results. The FFT is run, I'm, I'm inputting a 500 kilohertz signal, I'm sorry, a 500 hertz signal, and uh, it's running an FFT on it. I'm also running a separate Python program that stroke that little bar graph down there in the lower right, and it's interesting to me on what a time hog the task is running. Well, it's not a task, it's a separate program and how much it hogs away the CPU time from the Python program that just writes those uh, LEDs from uh, right to left. Now, here I, again, I'm, uh, I'm just inputting a 500, a 500 hertz tone from my phone into the microphone. Now if we go over there to the, uh, the console here, get the slide out of the way here, I can uh, I can show you what the uh, that is what the input looks like. If we drop this down to 500 hertz, let's just do that instead. I'm so fidget with the the phone is not perfect here. So there's wait till it stabilizes, there's 250 hertz, and it's shaped like that because I run a window on it. Um, let's see if I can get rid of this, show the spectrum. Uh, so we want to we wanna view the, uh, the magnitude of the output data here. And as you can see, the spectrum, this is a spectrograph, if you notice, I'm putting in a 250, 250 hertz sine wave, and this, the main spectral peak appears right at 250 hertz, which is called spectroscopy. It's used in a lot of different applications in science. Okay, so now if I input like a one kilohertz signal. So we go, I'm sorry, how about 500 hertz? Now you're going to see the spectral peak shift over to 500 hertz on the graph. It's, it's jumping because I'm talking too, and the microphone's picking up my voice, mixing it with the tone. Now we can actually go to 1, hertz, one kilohertz. I'm sorry, that's 2 kilohertz. So now you see 1 kilohertz. And now if you go over here, and you can see it's, it's, it's calculating one kilohertz, okay, we'll go back down to something a little less noisy here, there's 250. Now over here on the hardware, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the hardware here. The board on the right is uh, is what's called a GERT board. 
it's just basically an interface for it. It allows you to utilize a lot of the GBIOs. I bought this kind of cool zebra case for the Raspberry Pi. And, uh, and I wired this display up to it. It's a 120, 128 by 64 pixel display. You know, and I could put custom pictures on it and stuff. And uh, that's about it right now. So I did play the guitar in front of it for a little bit, and I'm having a little bit of uh, issues with gain. Now the little microphone module, which is right there, I purchased from Adafruit, and it apparently has an automatic gain control, which also known as AGC in it. So loud sounds are made a little louder, and, and uh, I'm sorry, loud sounds are made a little softer, and softer sounds are made a little louder. And then that input, that small audio signal goes into the A to D converter on this Texas Instruments MSP430. And then the Raspberry Pi retrieves that buffer of data of sampled audio over I squared C bus for processing in the Raspberry Pi. It windows it, runs an FFT, etc. And then it comes up with a frequency. This is what's known as digital signal processing. And it, and it has a lot of, it has just tons of uses in the audio world, the scientific world, astronomy. It's, it's a spectroscopy, basically, you know. Um, pretty cool little project. And just just something for me to do sitting at home at my desk. But anyway, I haven't been able... I did play the guitar in front of it, and it is pretty accurate, so you you could conceivably tune the guitar with it. I was trying to think of a, of a unique interface, like if you look at... Uh, if you look at uh, the strobe tuners, like from... Uh, I forget, what's, it, what's the Peterson? I mean, I could come up with a little... with a cool little display that shows the... Uh, you know, like, you know, some kind of a rotating pattern, and then the speed will be determined whether it's sharp or flat based on the frequency. But anyway, it's pretty cool. You know, I, I kind of like all the little blinky lights, you know. It's me as this embedded systems nerd kind of guy, you know, I like all the lights. That's kind of cool. But anyway. There's the uh, game. I'll take a shot over here. This is this is the Linux. Uh, you know the, the graphical user interface side of things here. And you can see again. I'm putting in a uh, a 250 hertz waveform. Hey, let's put in a let's put in a two let's put in a two kilohertz waveform. So let me get my phone here, and then there's two kilohertz. So now we zoom out here. So there's two kilohertz, and then over here on the graph in real time. Well, that's not quite real time, but the spectral peak. The spectrum is very pure. If you notice, there are no other spikes. So this would be interesting here. Let me show you this here. And let's just say, since there's only one, there's only one spike. There's it's just one pure frequency. That's the fundamental. All right. Well, what if we take like a dual tone from the telephone? So let's turn on the speakerphone here on my phone. Now you can see. There are other frequencies present of different magnitudes in the spectrum. Like if I hit the number one key, these are dual tones, so you'll see two distinct frequencies in the spectrum. And they're just summed together. I'm going to get the operator here in a minute. I better let me turn this off and try to start it again. 
So here's the four key. Here's the five key. Okay. This is the essence of of uh, of digital spectrum of digital signal processing. So you're taking an audio signal and you're sampling it and you're converting it to a series of binary values, binary weighted binary values with different magnitudes to represent that signal. And uh, then you do the processing on it in a digital world. So it's a, the analog signal is a time domain signal and then you turn it into a frequency domain signal by the, via the FFT and then you can uh, extract the frequency components by the FFT or the discrete Fourier transform. But anyway, you know, I'm just playing around here. This is my uh, my little Raspberry Pi development center, so to speak. You know, just something for me to tweak around with at work. Not at work, at home. Well, anyway, kind of a cool project.